the thing is, it's difficult enough when you're, you're actively fighting your addiction. Um, and then we have a programme that runs in Liverpool uh, in the North West, and we've got nearly 100 people with us at the moment who are we're all showing support via walks and um, group meetings, etc. But Christmas is even tougher. Um, you know, there's lots of works nights out, lots of stuff on the telly. Uh, social media is full of people having nights out. So it can be really, really tough uh, over Christmas to to have that awareness and keep yourself safe. You know, what I'm really passionate about is, is letting people know that putting your recovery first at this period is, is, is paramount. It's very easy to be swept away by the, the peer pressure of, of works nights out or feeling like you have to socially go to these places. Um, and I'm very, very loud and proud about my recovery. It's five years since, since I've had a drink or a drug. Um, my addiction was took me to some really painful places. But I, I realised that by, by being proud of, of, of my recovery, it was really important that I put my recovery first, especially over Christmas, we say to everyone who's with us, you know, putting your boundaries in place, being really open and honest with people um, is so important around Christmas. Yeah. You know, if, if you, we've got to be aware of whether you actually want to go to these places or whether your addiction is trying to actually get you there. Um, and so it's having that level of awareness and having the support and the honesty uh, yeah. to make sure you get through and into 2023 in a really fit and strong and healthy place. And I think a lot of people, Lee, wake up especially after you work night outs, especially if you have been battling a bit of a problem for a long time as well, full of anxiety, full of regret, full of, you know, you're an, well, an empty bank balance for a start. But people really struggle to break that cycle. People think, well, hang on, life won't be fun. But maybe people need to have a look and go and find out from people like yourself that there is actually a better future out there, isn't there? There is a brighter future out there. It doesn't have to be like this for people. Patrick, you've... You've, you've nailed it sort of there because when I was actively being controlled by my addiction um, and I made that decision to quit, you know, I desperately wanted to change. Um, my addiction was taken off me, my mental health, my family, my wife, my children, my job um, and everything. So I had to change. Um, but when I made that decision to stop, I could hear my addiction saying these things to me that you've just said. Mm. You know, I'll be boring. I'll have no social life. Um, I won't be able to go to work uh, because I obviously I work in the hospitality industry. I'm a DJ. Mm. So, you know, I'm around that type of thing a lot. Um, so all these really daunting things are, are getting spoken to you by what I call your addiction, actually being able to recognise when it's talking to you. You know, you're going to be boring. You'll have no social life. You're going to be on your own. Mm. Um, but I was all them things, Patrick, when I was drinking. I, I yeah. didn't have a very good social life. I didn't have any family. I had no support. All these things that I desperately wanted. My decision to quit drinking drugs has brought me back. I now have an amazing wife. My relationship's better. I've built my trust up. My kids idolise me. Me, me. I'm more creative. I'm more ambitious. I'm fit. I'm strong. I'm healthy. All the things I wasn't when I was actively drinking. Um, but your addiction will never support your decision to stop. It will chat away and telling you all these things like you've just mentioned. Yeah. Um, and remind you of the good times as well, Lee, as well. Rewards. Yeah, and, and, it, and it will constantly remind you of the good times as well. It won't remind you of that time that you ended up face down in the gutter or you lost a job or your missus left you or your kids looked at you like you were scum or any of that stuff. It will remind you of that one time that you had two years ago where you had a cracking house party and it was brilliant and it kind of can get into your head, can't it? And I can, I can understand that completely. But sometimes as well, for a lot of people, it's just admitting it, right, is the, is the first step, maybe even recognising it themselves, a bit of denial going on. But isn't one of the best things to do, potentially, to actually speak to other addicts about it so that... Because they understand, don't they? And actually, things that you would maybe say to someone who's just, a, quote, some quotes, a normal person, right? They would look at you like you're absolutely mental. But if you actually speak to someone who's a fellow addict, you can actually just have a conversation normally about it and maybe take the power out of it. Uh, completely, completely. The power of being open and honest and having somebody to talk to who has been there and understands is basically what our programme is all about. You know, having that ability to be open and honest and talk to somebody who's basically completely and utterly understands and has been there, you know, is vital 